the perfect thing to talk about on a super hot day like today is winter time and snow and cold Canadian winters. In Ontario, we can get temperatures down to minus 30 Celsius and it can get pretty cold. We have two temperatures. We have the actual temperature and then a wind chill temperature, which is often much, much colder. What happens to bees in wintertime? Honeybees don't hibernate. They actually stay in their hive all winter long. And what they do is they form a cluster to keep each other warm. They basically shiver their wing muscles, which means their wings aren't actually moving. But by shivering their wing muscles, they generate heat and they keep each other warm. The queen is kept in the center of their cluster at around 35 degrees Celsius, which is pretty, pretty warm. And what will happen is the bees will cycle from the outside edge of the cluster into the interior of the cluster, which is much warmer, and then back out to the edge again. So everyone gets to take turns getting warmer in the center of the cluster. Penguins do the same thing in the Arctic. With the clustering, they're not trying to warm or heat the entire hive. They're only heating up the cluster. It would be a waste of energy to try to keep an entire hive warm on winter days. Beekeepers use wood that is usually about three quarters of an inch to an inch thick for their woodenware, the, the hive boxes. And that gives an R value of insulation right off the bat for the bees. And then on top of that, many beekeepers will put a wrap on the outside of the hive, whether it's some plastic or um, a custom-made uh, insulated wrap that we can purchase as well. They're often made in black, and that's deliberate so that they will absorb sunshine and bring warmth to the hive. This will hopefully answer the question, why do bees make so much honey? Because they do. They make probably five times or more the amount of honey than they actually need, even for winter. The bees need about 80 pounds of honey to get through a cold Canadian winter, and they make far more than 80 pounds of honey, which is why a beekeeper can take honey from a bee and not harm them because they we still leave them with tons of honey. All winter long, they will snuggle together in that cluster and eat the honey that they have collected and they have pollen as well. So that's their carbohydrate and their protein together. The queen will stop laying eggs in the fall. As the sunshine decreases, the queen knows it's time to stop laying eggs. Unfortunately, all those lovely male drone bees are kicked out of the hive to starve and die from, from the cold and from starvation because they burn up the resources of the hive and they can't contribute. So unfortunately, they're pushed out of the hive. So it's only the female worker bees and the queen that will go through the winter together. Many other insect creatures that are seeking warmth will find beehives and they will tuck themselves into any nook and cranny of the beehive that they can on on the outside or inside the wrap they will tuck themselves in because they want to take advantage of the heat from the hive as well there is a rule no pooping in the hive so when the bee has to go to the toilet what it does is it waits for a fairly decent or sunny winter day. She'll warm up her wing muscles as much as she can, and then she'll fly out, let loose her poop, 
and then fly back into the hive. If the bee hits the snow and falls and hits the snow, she's pretty much done for. And she will work very hard to warm up her wing muscles. But unfortunately, basically what she'll do is melt a little hole that she'll go down, down, down in. And she's pretty well done for. I hate seeing that when I go out to the bee yard in winter. Sometimes I'll pick up a few of those bees and warm them up in my hands. And just like Lazarus, they'll come back to life and um, fly back to their hives. I'll never forget the day. It was a nice winter day, sunny, and we had three feet of snow. And I drove out to the bee yard and I had a sled with me, which I put some gear on because I wanted to check on the hives and see how the bees were doing. And I had to go through a snowbank and I remember getting stuck. I was stuck up to about my hips in this snowbank and trying to get through it to get to the hives and my phone rings and it's Red Cross with an emergency. And I'm like, I'm stuck in a snowbank. Anyway, I did get that resolved. I was a volunteer at that time. So anyway, I did get that resolved, but it was just funny timing. In spring, once there's more and more sunlight, the queen will start laying eggs again. And the early flowers, when they come out, the bees really need the pollen. They need that protein quite urgently in early spring because they need to feed it to their babies. They can't raise babies without pollen. And so that's why many recommendations are don't cut your dandelions until they're about to go into seed and then cut them then. Just leaving them that little bit longer so that the bees can use that resource as a, as a source of protein. The good news for bees about winter is that a bee can live for months and months and months in the winter time because they're really they're not really doing any work. They're just clustering and hanging out, maybe telling a few bee stories about last season and maybe singing songs and telling jokes. So life is fairly easy in the hive as long as they have enough food. And so they can live a very long time. Whereas when they're out foraging in summer, they can get into accidents with too much wind and they hit a branch or something, you know, hits them. They fly into vehicles and so on. So their body can get pretty damaged and pretty worn out. And they only last about a month because it's such hard work and it's so dangerous. So wintertime is, is a quieter time for them.